So I got a little confession for you guys. I actually haven't played Magic in a while. And uh, when I did was about this time frame, back when uh, War of the Spark and Core Set 2020 came out. And I hopped on Arena uh, really for the first time and started playing and really got into it. I had a lot of fun during that time frame uh, through Throne of Eldraine and uh, Theros Beyond Death. Uh, and that's uh, kind of didn't jump back into it uh, during Ikoria, even though I love all of those sets. And uh, if you can't tell, I'm more of a collector than really anything. Uh, even when I do play, I'm uh, marginal at best. Uh, so I'm actually thinking uh, ahead to Strixhaven. I'd like to jump on Arena and play a little bit more and maybe even stream some games at some point just for fun. I'm not competitive. Um, but I wanted to kind of recapture a little of the nostalgia from all the way of like a year two years ago when uh, these sets came out and I actually had a really good time. Uh, so let's open up some War of the Spark and some Core Set 2020. Go back to the glory days all the way of 2019, I think is when these actually came out. So here we go. Core Set 2020. I, I really like this set a lot more than 2021. And I probably just got the rose colored glasses because I actually played it, right? So uh, let's see if I can kind of pull out Something that I used to play with. Uh, yeah, there we go. Sub McKinnon stuff. Um, I like uh, Graveyard Recursion. Um, I played a deck that was a pseudo reanimator at one point. Uh, I had a lot of fun with that. So here we go. Imperian Eagle. Uh, I'm a sucker for blue and white and pumping up other creatures and flying creatures. So I had a, a Sav uh, Savala deck, I think it was her name. She's the big angel that you can cast for by tapping four tapped or uh, flying creatures, get her out on turn three, honestly, potentially. Um, uh, that's a pretty, that's a pretty cool thing to pull off. And uh, then she gives all your creatures indestructible. Brian Horn Cutthroat. I actually hate playing against this card. Uh, I'm sure many of you do as well. Uh, those decks were really nasty at the time. Mask of Immolation, uh, I didn't see that a whole lot. Poof, there we go. Well, at least I got uh, one of the, my favorite cards out of this set, and I think this is one of the better money cards as well. So I played a, a vampire deck um, with the uh, the vampire that's like a one drop, and you can pump him like crazy, and this was part of that deck. So Soren, Imperious Bloodlord as a Planeswalker, Love it. So we'll scan this up too, since that's my thing too. But being 1424, so hey, I'm already already on my way. Maybe I should rebuild this as a physical deck and um, find someone to play with. <laughs> Let's go. Twenty twenty squad captain. I saw this card a lot during uh, oh uh, Momir. I think when. Uh, they would do some of the events um, on Arena. That was you would never play this outside of Limited, probably, and I think that's where it got played. Seasbreaker um, didn't play much Rakdos colors. Apostle of Purifying Light didn't play that. Wake Root Elemental. Let's see. It's a six drop five five. You can pay five to untap target land you control because of five five Elemental creature with haste is still land. I don't think that one saw a lot of play during that time. That's uh, probably not a big one currently at yeah, 35 cents. There we go. Next up, the Frilled Sea Serpent. Yeah, these commons, uh, you know, I guess they're just kind of good beaters and limited. Act of Treason, just a classic. You get to see that kind of stuff. Anticipate. I uh, definitely saw a lot of play uh, during the st during Standard. Um, yeah, it's, it's like you know, looking at the top three cards of your library and put them back in into your hand, uh, one of them into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library. I mean, it's like a ponder, well, a two mana ponder anyway. <clears throat> in standard, that's pretty powerful. Herald of the Sun, didn't play with that. The Altar, Overgrowth Elemental, yeah, t Elementals in common or uh, counters. That was a thing. Graph Digger's Cage, sure. So this is good, good tech against uh, the Reanimator stuff. Um, I actually played this in the sideboard with a uh, with Karn. You can go, you can dig for a card like that with Karn. There we go. There we go. Let me let me know down below what were you guys playing at that time. 
What were your favorite decks from M20 and War of the Spark? Duress, classic. God's willing, yeah. This is a this was a good card at the time. Um, uh, with Feather, yeah, they would play this on Feather, um, and then that 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 deck was unstoppable with that manifold key. Eh, got a couple little possibilities. Leyland of Sanctity. If it's in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. You have hexproof. It's uh, eh, it's kind of just a win more, I suppose. Um, couple bucks there. I didn't see that too much while I was playing. Salt. Reduced to ashes. I don't even remember this one, but look at that skelly. Bonus winners. Those are all reprints anyway. Rabbit bite. The Wolf Rider Saddle, Unchained Berserker, Salvager Ruin, Voracious Hydra. Yeah, I love it. this is my jam too. Hydras and Counters. That one's cool. Portal of Sanctuary, 336. Yeah, return target creature you control in each aura. I attach it. So when uh, um, uh, Theros Beyond Death came out and there were a lot of enchantments, this became a thing, I think, at that point. And since then, eh, 25 cents and foil, 45 cents. Not a big deal. Uh, I think in standard, it went up a little bit. All right, let's look at these War of the Spark cards. And what's not to like? You get a Planeswalker in every deck. Um, I love Ravnica sets. Um, this one sort of counts as that, I would say. I mean, it's set in Ravnica, but it's really... Uh, the flavor of it, it brings in a lot of other um, stuff from all the other planes. Um, yeah, like Tybalt, he's not from Ravnica, but there it is. Tyrant Scorn, this was something that saw a lot of play. Um, it's it's good to have options, right? You can either destroy a target creature with a converted mana cost three or less, or return target creature to its owner's hand. That's It's pretty annoying to play against that. Um, I had a Demir deck that used this, of course. Um, I wonder if it's still worth anything. I know it was worth like a buck or so back then. Nope, nope. Doesn't make the grade for Eternal Formats, apparently. Eternal Taskmaster. Tamio, there we go. So uh, it took me a while to wrap my head around this card um, when it was in Standard. And really it was about that first plus one ability. Choose a non-land card name. Reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all cards with the chosen name from among them into your hand and the rest in your graveyard. Just dig. Dig for that thing that you need, right? That's what it's all about. So, buck. A big buck right there. But uh, great art and Planeswalkers are just cool. They just are. I actually played uh, Super Friends during this time. Uh, before the Ikoria Planeswalkers came out and kind of really pumped that up. Um, but it was fun. <clears throat> Vivian's Grizzly. I remember this being a thing during one of those events where I think like mana didn't matter. I can't remember what they are. Banehound. Yeah, I like stuff like this. It's just a um, great early card to have. Lifelink Haste. I know it's not going to win you the game, but... Um, I'm just I'm stuck on stuff like that. So Callous Dismissal, actually, very underrated card, I think. Um, so I used to watch Mono Black Magic a lot, and this is one of the cards that he really liked, and we put it like in every deck. And so I would <clears throat> kind of net deck off of him. And, uh, I mean, having an unsummon with a, with a token, make a token, that's, that's amazing. I mean, it's, it's a really fun card to keep bringing back and you can annoy your opponent with it a lot so it's fun Chandra's Triumph Redemption this is Triumph Domri Anarcha Bolas yeah I play this card a little bit too um, the Gruel Colors uh, during that time like this card wasn't even that big of a deal to have in my deck um, but uh, a lot of the um, <clears throat> fight mechanics and uh, like dinosaurs from uh, Ixalan that were just about to rotate out uh, worked well with that. Soren's Thirst. 
There we go. Okay. What else we got here? A raging crunch. The worst kind of crunch. Time twist. Yeah, like this this card I think um, could have seen a little more play. And let's see, why would I think that uh, target permanent return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the next end step enters the battlefield as a creature? I don't know. I think I saw a little bit of play or I tried to mess with it or something. It didn't really like catch on much, I guess. The weirds, those were nothing big. Quatley's Raptor. So I actually, when I first got back into this, uh, the first thing I did was get into Proliferate, and I had a pretty good Proliferate deck. There's a there's a spirit that flies that like proliferates, and um, so I was just really trying to go wide and pump up creatures. That's definitely my play style. It's not like a top level strategy, obviously. Um, but I think it's fun, and I'm not a top-level kind of guy either, anyway. So Interplanar Beacon works so well with the Planeswalker deck. Um, Got to run four of them if you're doing Super Friends, and that's what I did. So gain in life. There we go, Sahili. I didn't really play her much. wasn't trying to make servo tokens or anything. There we go, Feather the Redeemed. Um, this, this thing would just keep coming back and coming back and coming back, and you just quit the game. Cause like you're not getting anywhere against this so let's see if she's worth anything now it's a buck probably just doesn't work too well outside of standard in a foil island nice the citizen there we go this stuff can go over here naga eternal oh yeah the zombie nagas all the uh the armies a big thing at this point. Kaya's Ghost Form. Yeah, this is another one for your graveyard shenanigans or or at least keep them out of the graveyard, really. It just returns to the battlefield. Really good with uh, uh, some of the stuff from Theros. Gateway Plaza. Chandra. Rider. And this is trying... There we go. Soren Vengeful Blood Bloodlord. So this was the other vampire or the other Soren that I had in my Soren deck. And uh, it's not nearly as powerful as the Imperious Bloodlord, uh, but this is great for pinging. Um, give your your uh, creatures lifelink. Um, and then, yeah, re recursion from the battlefield, or from the graveyard to the battlefield, pretty important. Um, you can keep you in the game a little longer. It's a buck 77. All right, last one here. Thanks for watching, you guys. Appreciate it. Make sure to... That, hit that like button. Comment down below. <clears throat> what cards did you like from War of the Spark? And a Geode. Paul and Bright Druid. Like I said, Proliferate. Uh, I really like it. And this one gives you the choice to even... You can actually get started and throw a counter onto something and then, and then Proliferate. So pretty slow, honestly. But it's just... I like that, that style of play. Davriel... <clears throat> Merfolk Skydiver didn't really play with this guy much, but he had Proliferate. Mowu, yeah, that was one of my first decks too. And then um, it was he, he didn't stick around long. You know, if you see Mowu come out, you're probably gonna kill him. And a Kiora, this is a pretty underrated card too. And again, Mono Black Magic loves this card. I've seen him it, the, the untapping. It's actually a far more powerful than. Than you would think. So this is a pretty good card. And Dreadhorde Invasion. There you go. A mass, a mass, a mass. Every turn. Let's see if it's not much. There's no commander decks around that apparently. Alright. Anyway, thanks for watching and catch you next time.